Good evening, I'm your host SD Class and this evening we are chatting to an absolutely amazing guest. But as you know, we have amazing content coming to you live every weekday this night. We have Zamantungu Akumalo with the Private Property Podcast at 7 p.m. where she chats to the banks, where she chats to property investors, people who have been in the game for years now. So definitely that's something you do not want to miss. And of course, if you're interested in farming and agriculture, that's every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. And if you're interested in purchasing your first home or your second or third home while Chad is traveling around South Africa looking at amazing mansions, townhouses, apartments. It is a jam-packed week so stay warm and stay safe and without further ado tonight I'm sitting with an absolutely amazing guest who we've taken a while to meet. Eh? <laughs> we've taken a while to meet. I'm sitting with <laughs> Lesetua Tuna over here and tonight's discussion is again about property and as much as this is the first time home buyer show we have guests who come on the show who educate first time home buyers. We do not only speak two first-time homebuyers and tonight Lissetra has been in the property game since 2008 and just before we carry on Lissetra please say hi to our guests this evening. Good evening, good evening <laughs> guys and uh, nice to be here. Thanks yeah, so thank much. You. Just here. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me and let's talk about this. First introduce <clears throat> us, you do quite a few things. Your bio <laughs> is this long, <laughs> very long. So let's talk a little bit about that. Tell us about who who is Lissetra. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Lissetra it's, uh, it's a very young day. Am I young? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a very young, dynamic uh, mm. individual. Um, I'm a father of two, and um, you know, husband to my wife. And um, I'm a I'm a property investor. I uh, started investing in property from 2008, and uh, I'm still a full-time employee. They yeah. call it nine to five, but yeah. uh, even by five o'clock, unfortunately, some of us will still be in Zoom meetings. So there's absolutely no nine to five for exactly. us. Exactly. Um, and how is it juggling all of that? It's quite difficult. Mm -hmm. um, it requires a lot of discipline. It requires a lot of sacrifices, and uh, being away from your from your family. Because mm -hmm. pre-COVID, you know, we used to travel. I used to travel a lot as well. So I would be away from my family as well. And uh, over the weekend, I try as much as I can to, uh, you know, to navigate my property journey yeah. and make sure that you know I do deals and uh, go and view. Because you you're not gonna do deals if you don't view properties. Of first. course, yeah. And now, what was it that inspired you to get into property? I don't think there was a a, a moment uh, mm -hmm. that actually inspired me. It was more of a natural progression. Um, you know, started. I was first a home buyer, mm -hmm. and before I became a home buyer, mm -hmm. I I I wanted to understand the environment in terms of uh, what it actually means to be a property owner. Mm -hmm. So I then ventured and started looking for property. While mm -hmm. looking for properties, there were a lot of things that I actually did not understand. Uh, I think at that time we did not have YouTube, we didn't have these kind of shows as well where one could actually tap into to go and look for things that, uh, you know, if as a first time home buyer, mm. you should actually look out for. I signed my first offer and uh, during the week, you know, I signed it over the weekend during the week, I canceled that offer because yeah. uh, I wasn't certain of, on, on, on a lot of things. Then eventually I then joined one of the estate agents company as an intern, yeah. mainly to not to earn an income, it would have been a bonus, but mainly to learn so mm. that I could understand the environment and uh, and understand what is really going on mm. as a as a as a property owner. And I'm all f I'm all for experiential learning. And I think that a lot of the young kids and especially students, when you are studying, should take that opportunity to volunteer um, and to offer their free services to learn this. Because I feel like knowledge is power, and Absolutely. no one can take that away from you. Absolutely. You said you didn't have YouTube, so you gave away your age. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have YouTube, no, and now we know. <laughs> no, we didn't have YouTube at that time. <laughs> let's talk about that home buying experience. Um, let's, because you said that you know you you withdrew the offer a few weeks later. Um, within the week. Within, within that week, week yes. yeah. So, what was your first time home buying experience like? Look, I. I I don't think I had a checklist, so to say. I didn't know what I was actually looking for. Mm. What I knew that was that I don't want to rent anymore. Mm. Um, you know, it, it was time for me to, I didn't have a family at that time, by the way. So I was staying with my brother. Mm. So I said, you know what, we've been renting. So it's time for us to go and uh, look for a property. So we started looking for property. What kind of property where I really didn't have a sort of a defined direction right. that uh, I want to stay in Pretoria North, for an example. I'm looking for a flat. I didn't know the pros and the cons of actually owning a flat, the pros and cons of owning a townhouse or a standalone house. Mm. So I, I just, you know, blindly went out and said, I'm looking for a house. Yeah. I'm looking for a property to stay in. And now you know the pros and cons. Now I do. Mm. I do. I do know the pros and cons in terms of, um, you know, what kind of properties one should actually look at and, uh, you know, your area as well. What are the mm. things that you need to look at? Because it's 
the science behind each and every of course. whether you're talking about your strategy whether you're talking about your area because you don't just wake up there is centurion mm. for example but within the centurion there are areas that you can look and say this is what I want to focus mm -hmm. on in Centurion. Mm. You just spoke about strategy, and this is one of my questions, actually, because you speak about it with, in your introduction to me. You spoke about everyone needs to have a property strategy. Yes. Or even just a life strategy. Like, what is your strategy to get by? Absolutely. You know, what is Lesetra's strategy? My current strategy at the moment is uh, just normal buy to let. And um, I'm, I've actually been doing buy to let for the past, you know, when I started in 2000, when I bought my first investment property, mm -hmm. um, which is funny how I actually bought it in 2000 and 2009. Mm. So I've been doing buy to let. It was not a strategy that I adopted right. because I was not conscious at that time that this is what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I just said I need to have a rental, um, a rental property. Mm. So not as an investment property, I did not know how to go about it as an investment. Mm. So from 2009 up until today, it has been more on buy to let. And uh, what I'm actually focusing on at the moment is actually multi lets yeah. and small block of flats. Okay, so that's your strategy. That is my current strategy. You said something happened with your first time you did this. <laughs> Tell us that story. It it um it was a Saturday. Uh -huh. uh, I know it, quite, it is quite crazy. Um, I think one thing that I actually um it, I only learned about it uh, recently. Mm. Uh, one one of the coaches we did a I think they call it wealth dynamics. Mm -hmm. So it put me under a a deal maker. Mm. So I'm more of a deal maker. Mm. So I conclude the deal and leave it on the table, and that people would just need to tie it up and um, ensure that the property does or you know they you know put a team basically. I think the the power of the team actually comes in. So in 2009, I had a problem with my cell phone. Uh, it mm -hmm. was a contract phone at that time. So I was working to stay in Pretoria North. I was working to Tuanda Park Mall. Then I saw a board auction, um, mm -hmm. 11 o'clock, the board uh -huh. to the right. And um, just about 15 minutes before the auction, remember, I only had my ID with me because right. I had a problem with my phone. Mm -hmm. So I then went to, 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 to go to the auction just to see what was going on. When there, about four or five people just looking, and uh, the lady, the auctioneer, uh, asked me, do you want to register? I said, no, I'm not here. I just wanted to view. He said, no, you can register. And I said, I don't have money to pay for registration fee. He said, no, there's nothing. I said, but I don't ha even have the deposit. Yeah. Should I be a successful bidder? Because at least I did understand some of those um, terms, um, and, terms what's and a little you, bit of mm, them at that time. Because mm -hmm. remember, I started in 2008 yeah. as an intern agent. So I then went only to find that I was the only one of those people who were there who, who registered. Who registered and When the was... auction started at 11, yeah. and when the auction started, they started exactly at the time. Mm. If it's 11, it's 11. Don't come at five, five minutes after 11 yeah. and thinking that, um, you know, you're, they will wait for you. Mm. They don't use African time, so mm. to say. So 11 o'clock, it's 11 o'clock. So it started, you know, there were two properties. Two bedroom, two bathroom, mm -hmm. and a one bedroom flat. So two flats, mm -hmm. and uh, I raised my hand. I was the highest bidder. Did I do due diligence? Absolutely <laughs> not. I did not do any due diligence, yeah. but I had the numbers in my, in yeah, my yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. Say I should buy it for so much because I knew what the rental was. Although mm -hmm. I did not take into account other costs mm -hmm. of property ownership, your maintenance, your void costs, and so on. I just knew that if the rental is three thousand rand, and on average I'm gonna pay about three thousand rand. I must at least buy it for about 300,000 rand. Right. So I had that sort of psychological number in my head because I do work with numbers yeah. at, uh, at work. So that's how I actually bought the properties on my way to go and solve my, to go wow. and sort out my issues. Yeah. Then I end up buying two, two, two properties. It's a sign. I mean, <laughs> that's not a coincidence. <laughs> you talk about one of your skills being deal making, right? And I think that that goes hand in hand with negotiating. Yes. Uh, the power of negotiating, which we always talk about on the show. And just to the viewers at home, we just spoke about a strategy. Let us know in the comments right now, what is your strategy? What is your property strategy? What do you have planned? How can you make the property journey easier for you? And how can we all, you know, build our property portfolio? Because I think that's the goal at the end of the day. Absolutely. And you, you've you continued to do that. Yes, I've continued to and do that. It's let a us, business at the moment. Yeah. Let, so let us know a little bit about that. Well, I, I, I've regarded it as a business because I went through uh, training, mm -hmm. I attended seminars. I went through, you know, I've got a coach at the moment mm -hmm. as well because I said I want to take this as a business because the intention is at the end of the day, the passive income that one gets from it should be able to sustain us and I should decide whether I want to continue with my 9 to 5, exactly. which is not 9 to 5, it would be 9 to 11 o'clock right. in the evening. Right. So I should actually decide. So that's, uh, that's actually the conscious decision that I took. I said, I'm going to invest as much as I possibly can. Yeah. I remember one guy, 
when I told him that I could pay about 70,000 rent uh, for, for, for coaching. Yeah. Whether it was worth it or not, it's another discussion altogether. Uh, so I paid about 70,000 rent uh, mm. for coaching. And you could actually get that with one deal. Right. You understand? You could actually get that with one deal. Wow. So it's more of an investment mm. rather than an expense that you've, mm. uh, that you've incurred. So mm. I view that as an, as a, as a, as an investment. Uh, someone actually, some, a previous guest on our show, uh, uh, posted something recently um one of her mentors paid almost like a few hundred thousands for for coaching yes and she was like why why would you do that and the way that he explained it was that the return on this is gonna be so much better so much bigger so how important do you think it is to have a coach or a mentor it's it's very important mm. because those are the people that will um, that will walk you through the journey and hold your hand mm. so that you're not alone in this journey because there are so many mistakes that you can make exactly and uh, you need to make sure that it is someone who has already paid the school fees and they are doing what you want to do because mm. you want to either get at their level or be above, above. what they've actually uh, uh, achieved so it is very important that you that you actually get a, a property coach mm. or a mentor mm. so that you know they are there once you get a deal, someone says, I've got a deal because, you know, sometimes you need to make a decision within an hour. Exactly. So you should be able to bounce it with your coach and say, how do I handle it? Yeah. Uh, can I make that offer? Can I sign the offer? If I sign the offer, what are the conditions, the suspensive conditions that I can put in that mm. offer? Because those are actually important. Exactly. So if you don't have a mentor, if you don't have a coach and you're a first time home buyer, for an example, or a first time investor, and you don't have someone to hold your hands, so it mm. could be a bit tricky. Mm. And the other thing is um, the coaches would actually help you, you know, if your your plan is for this year I need to end passive income of ten thousand right? right. It's either you can end that through ten properties right. or with just one property. Oh, yeah. Same effort. Yeah. You mentioned that even first time home buyers should have a mentor or a coach. I would advise them to do that. Yeah. And I'm just trying to think like let's say, you know, young adults now, we've just graduated from varsity. We probably still not even permanent at our nine to five and um, we want to buy property and I think a lot of us what we do is we rush into it sure. we're like no this is an investment it's gonna make me money I'm gonna do it but then once you're in it you realize levies you realize all the hidden costs and you're just bombarded with all this information and I agree with you I think it's extremely important to have a mentor and not every mentor is expensive sure. not there are mentors out there who can you know um, provide all the help, but at a affordable cost. Or even for free. Or even there for are, free. There are people, I was on a call with someone from, from Namibia, mm -hmm. because we don't started chatting on, 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 on Facebook mm -hmm. uh, in, my, in, my, in my DM. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he sent me, I said, you know what, it's best, just send me a WhatsApp. Although I took about a day to respond to his WhatsApp mm -hmm. with all his questions. Then I said to him, you know, it would be better if we could just have a Zoom session for 15 minutes. Right. End up, it, it, ended up, it ended up being you know, a 45 minute session. Mm -hmm. So he's in Namibia. So and he was shocked that I'm still doing a nine to five, by the way. Oh really? Yeah, because he, he was he was, he was all shocked of that. and said, yeah. "But you're still doing this, and you're still posting, you're still doing all these other things because it's a passion of mine as mm. well." So there are people who are there. I'm not yet at the level that I think I can actually mentor someone right. because of I just don't have time. Because right. I said to him, he said, "No, can you mentor me?" I said, "A lot of people are actually asking me that I could, you know, mm. mentor them." But I said, unfortunately, I'm not available because mm. one, I don't want your money, mm. and then the next thing tomorrow you're going to accuse me that you know. I, I, I undershot, uh, shot changed you. Right. So I don't want to do that. So mm. I'm not yet available to, to mentor them. To respond to a Facebook post, I can do that. To respond yeah. to a DM, I do. Mm. And it actually takes my time. Exactly. So, so, so the, the, the pearls that I can, the pearls of wisdom that I think I can give, yeah. you know, it's the same as what you could actually be paying for thousands of rent from, from someone else. And I think it's about shooting your shot. True. It's about just DMing, you see a property investor, you see a property mentor, tell them your situation and tell them what, you, what your goal is within the property and just shoot your shot and be like, I mean, I can DM you tomorrow and then if you have time to help me, you would. True. And I think there are mentors out there who are at the capacity, who, are, who have the time, yeah. who will be willing to do it for free. I think the other thing uh, is that the world has changed so much. Mm. There's information out there. Although you just need to know which information to filter. There's information out there. You can go to YouTube and say first time home buyer. There are a lot of YouTube videos of that you actually get. Um, you know, if you go to Google and Google, you know, there are a lot of people that have actually written about the experience of um, first exactly. time home buying. So the experience is there. You just need to know and filter Research. those that you believe is actually relevant for you. Exactly. Before you even go out and look for a coach. Mm, yes. Exactly. That's actually very true. And we always talk about research, research, true. research, research. True. Just a few weeks ago, uh, we did a live panel discussion and it was about um, 
first time home buyers and what they need to consider. And you spoke about this earlier that there were things that you did not consider in your first time. Could you name like just three off the top of your head, three key points that you think? I think the first one would be the cost. Mm. I did not know the cost associated with property ownership. I see a lot of people posting on, so on social media who then say, um, I did not know how much the, you know, the costs are involved in uh, right. property ownership, especially when it comes to sectional titles. Mm. And there are people who don't understand sectional titles and full-time um, uh, title. Mm. Uh, to say, when it's come to sectional titles, there are levies. And levies quite, can be quite expensive. Could be about, uh, you know, almost two-thirds of, yeah. of your bond repayments, by oh, the way. So wow. they're quite expensive. So the first mm. one would be the cost associated with property ownership. The second one would be the area that you want to buy. So mm. take as much time as you possibly can to research about your area. Like I said, there are there is an area, there's a centurion, for example, as an right. example, and within centurion there are areas that you can look at and those that you, you know, they may not actually be good. So all prop all areas are actually not the same. Some, mm. Sometimes even within the area, it could be that this street is worse than the other street. Right. So you would then whittle it down and say, I have actually looked at the area, I'm looking at the section within the area and mm. the street within the area mm. as well. So those are things that are actually um, important. So I said, mentioned the cost, I should mention the area. Yeah, yeah. I also mentioned the, you know, I think the cost, it also relates to your affordability as well. So don't think about now. People mm. are buying now because the interest rate is 7%. Yeah. Tomorrow, what if it goes up? So I always say stress test your, your finances. Right. I work on 10%. I mm. take it that interest rate currently is 10%. Okay. So if I go and apply to the bond and I get 7%, 7.5, it's all good. Yeah. So I've actually built a buffer mm. in my in my in my cost so that mm. you know 10% it could go there in the next 2 3 years. Yeah. So exactly. it's just, I'm still I'm still covered. Always and be I would ready have built for, my reserves as well. Exactly. Always be ready for the change that could happen. True. And we spoke about this with Nedbank a few weeks ago on the show. Um you know someone who was from the home loans department and she was like, yeah, it's it's all great and well now that property is you know it's it's a great time to invest but yeah. what happens when we need to just shift everything and the interest rate just booms again are you ready for that i love that you said we need to do a stress test on our finances because a lot of us don't do that we're like okay cool i can afford this and then we go and we just invest True. you spoke about um the first time you know you said that lots of things came in your way that were like red flags almost and i'd like to hear I don't even want to know about the red flags. I want to know how we as first time home buyers can avoid these red flags. And what are, what are the red flags? Well, uh, do your homework, mm -hmm. um, know the area, know how much it will actually cost you mm -hmm. to, own, um, to own the property. Mm. And also if you buy from either from developers or you buy, understand if you buy from developers, what are the pros and cons of buying right. directly from the developer? What are the pros and cons of buying, what I would say the second hand um, mm -hmm. property? So understand all those costs and uh, and the dynamics. And also, if you're going to buy into a sectional title, there's a portion that you own. This is yes. what you own. Then you've got common property. Mm. So probably, you know, the cup hot may not even be yours. It's, uh, it's just sectional. It's yours, just that little space. Right. But the entire property is common property. And what does that mean as well? Mm. And if they're making noise upstairs, you know, what does that mean as For well? You, yeah. So is it an environment that you'd want your kids to, to actually grow up? Mm. If, you don't have, if, you have, if, if you've got kids, if you don't have kids, is it an environment that you'd want to grow up yeah. in? And the other thing is, I don't think there was so much emphasis in terms of the offer to purchase. I don't think it was actually explained to me okay. thoroughly in terms of the, the terms of, I think it was before the CPA. Uh -huh. uh, so it was not uh, thoroughly explained to me in terms of what are my obligations and what are my rights. And what is it that is actually expected of mm -hmm. me? And uh, what are the consequences should I fail to, 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 to deliver? Right. So it was not thoroughly explained to yeah. me. So when I, with the benefit of hindsight, I then went back home and said, you know what, I, I don't think it's something that I would want to, uh, to continue with. Mm. So I then called them and, um, and I cancelled. Fortunately, they didn't give me a hassle. Oh, nice. So that was an easy process right. to do. It was an easy process. And so I think the most important lesson here is how to avoid these red flags or is to do your homework, True. is to... You know, whether it means getting a coach, whether it means researching on the internet, True. whatever you need to do to help yourself understand. Because, again, the terminology and the jargon used within the property sector is also a little bit intimidating True. for someone who knows absolutely nothing. True. But, at the end of the day, but also don't suffer analysis by paralysis as well. 
So you analyze it too much, then right. you end up not even taking action. Mm, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Don't. So, so don't then there's a balance. Mm. Do your homework. Mm. Research as much as you can. Don't research, and at the end of the day, and you are unable to take decision. Mm. You need to take a decision at the end of the day because you need to go and view properties. You're not gonna buy a property if you don't view if them. You don't, but mm. I bought a few that I did not view. But don't do that. <laughs> I would not advise you to you do that. You bought a few that you did not. But a few that I had not even seen. So how did you see it? The only so time, I, the only time I went know? to see those properties was when I went to fetch the keys. Ah. <laughs> how did you don't know? Do it. <laughs> how did you know? <laughs> it's that a, don't do it at home. <laughs> yes. Don't do this at home. Don't try this at home, ladies no, and gentlemen. It was an online. I think before, before, long before COVID in 2016, the first one that I bought was in Rustenburg. Okay. So I did a bit of research though. Of in course. Terms of, yeah. You know, it was bought at uh, the previous owners. It was a developer. Bought it at uh, 650,000. Okay. So I got it at 300,000. Oh wow. So I gave myself. I always give myself a buffer and say, yeah. you know, what if the kitchen? I need to replace the kitchen. It will cost me about 15,000. If I need, to, if I need to replace the entire, uh, you know, tiles, for example, this is how much it will actually cost. And fortunately, when I went there, I just needed to replace a few tiles. Oh wow. The kitchen was still intact. Yeah. The bath was still intact. Okay. So I got myself a. Oh, that was a bargain. It yeah. was a bargain. But don't try this at home. Don't maybe. try this at home. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to talk about a little bit of the lessons that you've learned, right? Um, what are some of the lessons that you learned being on this journey? And if the, if you could advise your 10-year-old self, no, 18, 18-year-old self, because you didn't have YouTube. Really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if, you, if there's something that you could tell your 18-year-old self now mm. about investments, what would you tell them? Well, investment is a long term. It's a it's a long term gain. Mm. Um, it's um, you know you're gonna can buy a property today, and struggle to get a tenant for two months. Mm. So build a buffer for that. So it's something that you then need to to build into it, so that you don't buy it today hoping that immediately you'll get a tenant. Exactly. If you don't get a tenant or you don't get the tenant at the right price, yeah. What is going to happen? Are you prepared to? Are you prepared for a situation where you may have to adjust your rental, right. for example, because you need to be quite. Um, Flexible. So it is the first thing is it is a long term game. Yeah. Be there for the long haul. Mm -hmm. And uh, secondly, learn as much as you can. Mm. Thirdly, build a power team. Um, you know, you know, build a network. Uh, like you said, shoot your shot. Yeah. Uh, don't be afraid of shooting or of DMing someone yeah. and say, I like what you're doing, you know, um, you know, I need assistance with one, two and three. Mm. Can we do this? And a network with as with as many people as you possibly can. Um, right. you know, like now. At times I couldn't can't even believe it that this particular person is calling me and saying, Listen, there's this particular deal that I want you to look at. Yeah. Can we go for it? Yeah. People that I've been looking up to uh, never thought that would uh, would uh, now quite, partnering uh, with you. Quite strangely, it's people that we have not even met in person, but we've wow. been meeting virtual okay. because of COVID. Yeah. yeah. So I think uh, besides the lessons that you've learned and all the advice that you've given us now, right? I think it's so important to understand that. To not beat yourself up about it, you know, to, to always look at how far you've come True. and look and be grateful for, for, you know, you've made these big steps. There are some people, like you said, you've never even met them. And again, that's, it could be risky. It could be like, do I want to do a deal with this person or not? And again, research about the people that you work with is also important. You talk about a power team. Um, and you've said how we can make up that power team is about networking, shooting your shot, meeting people and just being open to not only making these deals, but also open to, to change, True. right? And I think it's so important because I always say this is that, yes, cool, it's great to do things alone. Yeah. It's great to, I feel like for me, a team is so important to do this with a group of people, whether it's a sister, a brother, your wife, your husband, but to have someone, a support structure is very True. important for me. And to have that throughout the process is obviously beneficial in the long run. True. So again, on the topic of power team, right? I'm sure there are some mornings where you're just like, ah, I can't today, ah, I can't, I have to do a nine to five. I have to do my other hustles afterwards. What keeps you motivated? I think it's the fact that I, I the vision that I have for my family, uh, I, want to buy, I want to buy my time back. Mm. So that at the moment I don't have my time. Mm. So my time is mostly detected, uh, dictated to 
by the type of work that I do. That you, do. Um, you know, I can decide that I'm going to go to the gym at six o'clock. Mm. Then, um, you know, just before you go to bed, you get a message that you need to have a meeting at seven o'clock or at six o'clock. Uh, as an example, yeah. you decide that, uh, you know, I need to go to, you know, see my friends after, uh, after hours, you know, six o'clock, for example, in the yeah. evening. Yeah. At six o'clock, you're still in the meeting. So I want to buy my, uh, buy, back my time. So mm. I should work because I want to. And also the type of uh, the future that I want for my for my family, they are the ones that are actually keeping me going. Yeah. Uh, you know, to say, you know, like my kids was actually complaining. <laughs> really? <laughs> my son was complaining <laughs> that, uh, Daddy, you know, she was telling my, the, the mother yesterday, yeah, yeah. that uh, I think it would be better if Daddy was working at retail. So they also thought, because pick and pay is just here. Right. So he thought that if I was working at pick and pay, you know, they could always go there and right. see me. Because they had to see me at times. Mm. Um, but although I do try my utmost best to to, to be there because he plays soccer, I want to watch him play, mm. and we discuss his soccer when we when we come back from 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 work. Mm. So it's mainly the the future that I want, and also the fact that um, the so I believe that there is so much that I also I'm a giver, mm. and uh, you know you can't give from an empty cup. Uh, so so there's so much so many people that I still want to to help, mm. and uh, there are many people that I'm helping as well where I can. And uh, so I think there's still room that one can um, can actually you know can actually give and exactly. um, can only do that once um, you have built sufficient assets and sufficient income mm. that uh, you can actually assist other people. You spoke about helping and giving back, and um, when I read a little bit of your introduction, you talk, you spoke about the importance of property education. True. Why is property education so important for you? I think as to avoid making mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, if I have made mistakes, mm. why should the next person behind make me this, make the very same mistakes? Right. Because I should be able to, to say to them, um, you know, I've, these are the pitfalls that you need to, to avoid. Don't make these mistakes. I've right. already made these mistakes. Yeah. Why do, there is already a, 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 a template that mm. you can use mm. for you to propel you to go to the next level. Mm. It might have taken me five years, for example, to earn 10,000 rand per month income, net income. Yeah. It can actually take you just one deal. Right. It doesn't have to take you 10, uh, t uh, um, ten, ten years, years or mm. five years, mm. but it has actually taken other people. So I think the important of education is, uh, is that you are empowered. Yes. Um, you know, even if you lose a deal, uh, you can go and make another deal. Mm. Because I always say, um, you know, um, when you are a property investor, you actually decide how much you want to make. So if I want to make 500,000 from a deal, um, I can actually do that. Yeah. And uh, as an investor, I always say we are there to solve other people's problems mm. and uh, in the process we'll get paid. Mm. How do you ensure to inspire others besides educating them and helping us not make the same mistakes? I want to take it back. We are in June. Let's talk about the youth. Uh, let's talk about how you inspire. How do you ensure to inspire the youth just before they get into property, before they even decide what they're going to study at university? Look, um, the Theoretical education is important, uh, but practical education is even important as well. Mm. Or should I say important? Important. So, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's actually important as well. Mm. And um, I actually volunteered while I was still a student. Mm. Um, I was, uh, you know, we, we used to run a Saturday school. So I volunteered my services. So share with people that you aspire, look at them. And uh, I always say, I was saying you know, TJ the other day that um, you know, he has actually been mentoring me from a distance. Okay. Um, so, you, you know, we, we haven't met, but mm. we've, um, uh, we are moving along in, the, in terms of some of the, uh, you know, uh, projects that we want to do. Yeah. Um, so, so, so you, you don't have to be so closer to a person for them to aspire. Look at them. What is it that you like about them? And what are the lessons that you can learn, learn from, from them and uh, take from them and, uh, you know, own them? You don't mm. have to replicate what they are doing or copy them, be yourself, but find your niche and, uh, and, and look at them and say, if I could uh, be like Lisita for an example, mm -hmm. who's doing a nine to five, who's also a property investor, and who's also involved in all these other things, right. you know, why, is it, why would it be impossible for me to do? Mm -hmm. It is possible for everyone to do. So I think what I would be, the inspiration to, to them is, um, you know, uh, the, 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 there's a lot of things that you still need to do. Um, you know, you need to, they need to work hard, right. uh, unfortunately. <laughs> and if you find yourself that you still need to do your nine to five, you knock off at eight o'clock, mm. then you must then say between eight and 12 o'clock, 
it's your it's time for your property journey if right. you're doing property whatever that you're doing so give it your time and say between this time and this time you know i'm not gonna sleep at nine mm. you know you're gonna have to sleep at 12 o'clock mm. and uh, slot it for you know, for the next five years until you've really uh, achieve the things that you actually want to achieve right. because that is important. Mm. And I think it's so important to also set deadlines, True. right? Deadlines and putting out the certain time that you're going to do this True. thing because we also can't reach burnout True. and overwork yourself. And I think what's so important is a lot of people need to understand that doing nothing is doing something. If yeah. there's a time that you need to take an hour to just sit and read and not worry about anything and that will get you refocused again, I think that's something that we need to be okay with. True. It's not really unproductive. Not true. That's true. something that I learned recently. <laughs> um, just before we close off, I have one more question. Your property journey, it's since 2008. Yes. If you could write, I'm not going to, if you could write a book about this property <laughs> journey that Lissetra went through, and um, tell us what the title would be, <laughs> and then tell us what the ending would look like. I think the the title of um or the, let me start with the ending sure um the ending of that book um would um you know would take the reader through the the journey of um you know where one started mm. and uh, and also what is possible of course. you know if i say you could uh, could buy a private jet mm -hmm. uh, it is possible that you can actually do that mm -hmm. so the journey would be you know the success of a person in terms of enjoying the time with your family and enjoying right. the time with the loved ones you don't have to wake up at five o'clock uh, because you have to you just wake up at five o'clock because you want you. to because you are inspired you enjoy what you're doing right and uh, the title of my book i've actually not ever thought of it someone <laughs> we i remember we having a debate the other day yeah. with Dumizo uh, from Ekasi properties uh -huh. and uh, you know i was saying to him no he even did a poll uh, on mm. his facebook page and say between you and i who should write the book and his followers said no it's him uh, mm -hmm. and i his i said it's something about um um, you know, the Ekasi properties. So I think if I could write a book, um, it's something that I'll think about. Yeah, we don't have I'm, to answer that I, now. I'm not sure if I will write So we're going to follow you on think. social media <laughs> and we're going to follow up with this book, you know, because yeah. I feel like whether it's a movie, a book, like the title kind of defines everything. Let's see after two years. Two years, we're giving, we're going to hold you accountable. Yeah, so eh? What, 21, 21, 2023? 2023. We are going to hold you accountable to this, myself and Agreed. the viewers. Agreed. Two years. <laughs> Thank you so much. Last, 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 last question. Very important question for me. Um, I finally defined it for myself a few weeks ago. Generational wealth. What does that mean for you? Generational wealth. It mm -hmm. actually means that um, my kids will, no, doesn't mean that they're not going to work. Mm -hmm. They're going to work even harder but they know that they are actually secured. Right. So they don't have to go and uh, look for a job and go and hand out CVs. Uh, they know that there is a business at home and they'll be working in the business. So mm. the generational wealth for me, because I always say I'm not preparing for my kids, I'm preparing for my great-grandchildren. Yes. Uh, that is the future that I'm actually preparing for. Yeah. Uh, even the, you know, the way the, 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 the portfolio is actually structured, it's mm. not for my kids, it's for my great-great-grandchildren. Uh, uh, so generational wealth for me, it's, uh, it's, uh, it basically means that, um, you know, my kids will not have to worry about, um, you know, the finances. They will yeah. not have to worry about uh, having to work. They've got all the freedom for them to explore their talents. Yes. If they don't want to work, they want to be a ballerina dancer, they want to be a soccer player. It is That's, entirely up to them. Yeah. Thank you so much. Do you have any final words for first time home buyers specifically? Well, I'll actually say to them, look, uh, go and view as many properties as you can and uh, don't be woodwinked either by an agent or by the seller and uh, go for the, for, the, for, for the first house that you see. View as many houses as you mm -hmm. possibly can. And uh, once you've viewed the house, the one that you like, you know, I always say, go at night, around eight, nine, uh, because if you view the property around five, it could be quiet. Go and view the property in the evening as well. That's Just awesome. drive around the neighborhood, not necessarily the house, but the, around the neighborhood. Mm. Is it a neighborhood that you can stay in at night? Is it a neighborhood that you can stay in the evening? Mm. So that's my advice to the first time home buyers. Thank you so much, Lissetra. Thank you so much. To everyone at home, that's absolutely amazing advice, I think. I've never heard that one before. To drive around in the evening because, you know, that's when you can understand the neighborhood, yes. understand the neighbors, understand what you're going to be deal dealing with for the next couple of years. And if it is going to be your home, you're going to be living there for a few years. If it is a property investment, understand what your tenants are going to be experiencing. Because I think 
uh, the best property investors are those who can, someone once said on the show, if I can live here, then I can put tenants in here. True. So always keep that in mind. You don't want to buy mind. a property in an area where you can't even take your kids with. Exactly. So True. thank you so much. To everyone at home, thank you so much. Please join us again next week, Wednesday, same time, same place. And do not forget, we have absolutely amazing content coming to you every weekday. Thank you.